Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to learn about the time value function, which is just like the date value function, except it gives you the time instead of the date. And we're going to use that to say, okay, I want to enter my appointments in, but I want to make sure that they're entered in between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. of whatever given day they're on. So for example, if my secretary goes to put an appointment in and she puts in 7 p.m., it'll say, ah, I, I, nope, can't do that. It's got to be between 9 to 5. There's a really easy way to do it. I'm going to show you that now. First up, if you haven't watched my date value video, go watch that first. It explains how that function works, which is very similar to this one. So I'm not going to repeat a lot of the stuff I said in that one. So go watch this one if you got no clue what I'm doing. And I'm going to show you how the time value function works. But we're going to also use a validation rule to monitor what's entered into the table as far as when the user types in the date time. So if you want to learn how that works, if you've never used a validation rule before, go watch this video. Those are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. You can go watch them whenever you want. You'll find links you can click on down below. This is my Tech Help free template, my sample database. Again, you can grab a copy of this off my website as well. It's absolutely free. Let's take a look at some date time values. Let's go to the contact table. The contacts are every time you talk to somebody, you put a contact in the system, right? So we've got the contact date and time, and that is a date time value, date time field. And sometimes you want to pull out just the date, and sometimes you want to pull out just the time. So we learned about the, the date value function in the last video. Today, we're going to do the time value function. So let's go make a query, create. Query design. And let's say I'm going to bring in my contact table, bring in the contact date, and we're going to come right here. And I'll zoom in for you, shift up two so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to say the date only is date value of contact date, right? Hit OK. And I'll tab over here. And I'll shift F2 again. And I'll say the time only is the time value of contact date we're gonna pull those apart give me the date give me the time give me an l l give me an r ah no never mind all right let's run that query and there you go it's that simple i've separated out the date and i've separated out the time now why and when is this useful there's a lot of different things you can do with this but one thing that i like to do is to make sure that a date time value that's entered is within a particular range of times like the example that I mentioned earlier. Let's say you're doing your appointment calendar and you want to make sure that whoever's putting your appointments in for you puts in something between 9 and 5. You don't want someone scheduling a, like a, an accidental you know, 10 p.m. appointment, right? Or a 2 a.m. appointment. So this is a good check for that. So let's make a quick appointment table. All right, create table design appointment ID, that's my auto number. And yeah, I'm okay with abbreviating long words like appointment, just be consistent, right? Appointment, date, time. Now remember, date and time individually are keywords. So we never, never, never wanna have a field called date or a field called time. I see this all the time, right? They're reserved words and access. I've got a video coming out on reserved words very soon. I've been working on it for a while. Uh, but in the meantime, Alex, my right-hand man, has been compiling a glossary entry here with all the different reserved words in them. I'm going to be covering the big ones and why you shouldn't use them. But if you want the full list, I'll put a link down below to the reserved words list. Now, date time by itself is a reserved word, but it's not one of the major ones. It's not doesn't usually give you problems. But I like to still put something in front of it, like something date time, right? Contact date time, uh, order date time, that kind of stuff. Order date if you just want the date. Um, anyways, this is going to be a date time value. Remember, dates and times are also together in the same field, right? Now, you could do a separate date field and a separate time field. And that's an easier way that a lot of beginners will, will get over this problem by having two separate fields. But that adds also some problems too. But let me just show you this first. So description, all right? And then we're done with this table. That's my appointment T table primary key yes all right now as of right now there's no restrictions on here whatsoever so anybody can just type in whatever they want okay so i can come in here and say you know uh, um today's date i'll hit the control semicolon that puts today's date in there and then i'll put in here uh, you know 9 a.m tab 
staff meeting, right? Okay, but again, we've got nothing in here to restrain us from entering in 9 p.m. So that's where the validation rule comes into play, and you watch the validation rule video so you know what that means. So let's go in here and take a look at how we set that up. Now, if I come down here to validation rule, okay, and if this field only had time values in it, you could say something like this, between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. And remember, we put our dates and times inside of those little pound signs. Right here, I'll zoom in so you can see that better, right? Dates and times go between those. Okay. Now, let me save it. It says data integrity rules have changed. Existing data may not be valid for the new rules. Do you want me to check it? Yeah, go ahead and check things for me. And it says, oh, existing data violates the new setting. In other words, you've got stuff in your table that doesn't work with that validation rule. Okay, I'm going to stop testing. I'm going to hit cancel. Now, you can still save the table at this point. Let's go take a look at our data. Now, that's 9 a.m. What do you mean? Why is that not between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m.? Well, because the validation rule doesn't take the date into consideration, just the time. Okay, and interestingly enough, if you come in here now, and if I type in today's date at, let's say, 10 p.m., watch what the message comes up and says. Look at it. It says one or more values prohibited by the validation rule between, look at that, 12 30, 1899. Here, I'll zoom in. All right, 1899, 9 o'clock, and 12 30, 1899 at 17 o'clock, which is 5 p.m. So if you don't specify a date in your validation rule, it gives you zero day, which is December 30th, 1899. Why they picked that day, I don't know. That's just what they did. Okay, so you've got to make sure you have a date component there as well. Or you can just store only time values in there. And you can use two fields for that. That's a perfectly fine setup for beginners if you, if you want to do that. I've, I've had people build databases like that before. They were perfectly fine. You store the date in one field, you hit tab, you put the time in the next field. It, it, that's, that's fine. That's perfectly valid. Okay. Later on, if you want to put them together, you just simply add them and then you've got the complete date time value. Okay. But we're a little past that now. So we're going to, we're going to use a little bit more advanced method. I like to store dates and times together in the same field if possible. All right. So what do we do? Let's hit okay. Let's hit escape. Let's cancel out of that. Let's go back to design view. Okay, now we know how to split off the time value from a date time field by using the time value function. All right, so can we use that in the validation rule? Well, yeah, let's give it a try. Shift F2, zoom back in. Now we have to write this a slightly different way. I'm going to say time value of appointment date time has to be greater than or equal to 9 a.m. and time value appointment date time has to be less than or equal to that's up to you 5 p.m okay do that say take this date time pull out its time that whole thing has to be greater than or equal to 9 a.m and it has to be less than 5 p.m now be very careful and notice what just happened this gets a lot of people you see it let me zoom in so you can see it closer you see that all right, this is a little more advanced, and a lot of people wonder why this stuff doesn't work sometimes. Because Access thought it was being a good boy, and it put quotes around that field, and it's not. Now, normally I tell you, especially in my beginner classes, don't put spaces in your field names. Because then, you got to remember to put the brackets around everything. Well, there are some, some cases where you still have to use those brackets because Access is trying to guess at what you mean, and it thinks you want a quote uh, set of quotes there, and you really don't. You want that field value. So even though we don't have spaces, we still got to put the brackets on it. So be aware of that. That happens a lot. I see that in a lot of questions people send me. Okay. Now that's what we want. That's our final formula. Okay. Let's save that. All right. Data integrity rules have changed. Say yes. Okay. Everything's good this time because the field that we, the value that we got in there is good. All right. Let's put another record in. Let's say uh, today's date at uh, 12 p.m. I've got lunch with Kirk. Okay, that's good. Let's try another one in here. Let's try today's date at 10 p.m. 
Oh, well, look at that. One or more value is prohibited because the time value is greater than that and less than that. Now, you still see the old dates in there, but that's okay because the time value gets pulled out, and that time value is going to be 1230-1899 at 10 p.m. You don't want this big, long message because your end user is going to look at it and go, what? Huh? 1899. So we're going to give them a friendly message, right? Hit escape a couple times. Come back in. Meow. Design view. All right. Validation text, right? Appointments must be between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Thank you. Thank you for your cooperation. Save it. Come back in. Meow. And now let's try uh, let's try that rush concert again, right? 9 p.m. Oh, appointments must be between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Thank you. Thanks for calling. Let's go back to 4 p.m. And we're good. And now I've got a battle drill. See? And we're good. There you go. Do you like this date time stuff? I got a lot more classes on date time stuff. I got a two-parter, Access Expert 27 and 28. In this 20-something series, I cover all the functions in Access, like all of them. 27 and 28 are the date time functions. This is part one, right? And then 28 is part two. Oh, missed it. There it is, part two. We go over all the different date functions, how to display ordinals, calculating someone's age, listing birthdays for next month. All, so many examples, all kinds of different stuff we do down here. Lots of cool functions I give you. Okay, and if you really want to learn more, I got the Access Date Time Seminar. All right, and there's like tons of stuff. Okay, like all kinds of extra stuff that I came up when I was doing Expert 27 and 28 that I didn't have time to cover in those classes. So, all right, we do a holiday table. So we figure out, if you want to figure out how many business days there are between two dates, right? There's a function in, in Excel called network days where, it, you know, if you give it a Tuesday and the, the following Wednesday, it'll calculate that there are, what, six business days in there. It pulls out uh, Saturday and Sunday. And a lot of holidays like Christmas and New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, those are easy to figure out. But what if you want to figure out, you know, Labor Day, first Monday in September or Thanksgiving? Well, I'll show you how to make a table. We can put that stuff in there. Okay. So there you go. There's time value. And you sat through my little advertising portion of the video. Hope you enjoyed. <laughs> I hope you learned something. Uh, I had a lot of fun, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the Show More link down below the video to find additional resources and links You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, 
Check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.